Uh, what factors lead to the success or failure of um, worker-owned cooperatives, and in particular, successfully transitioning from labor to owner, versus outside factors like the Fed and monetary policy? Uh, and the second question, I failed to articulate well. So I'm gonna, yeah. Just um, in the face of all the, the move amongst investors um, to purchase farmland and also consolidate farmland, you know, how can the individual counteract that with the cooperatives? Okay. Um, well, I'll just give the answer, but I think um, some of the other panelists can probably answer even more. Uh, in terms of the challenges for worker crops in particular, I think one, um, building that ownership uh, ownership culture is difficult. And so the things that I've, the co-ops I've studied really have the, the most successful cases in the ones that have been able to um, do very strong orientation and training and then continuous education. So really good orientation and training and then continuing to be a learning organization to talk about these things, to talk them through, to address things in particular like how to run good meetings, how to do uh, uh, conflict resolution, those kinds of things. So really keeping the, the energy moving and the, and the uh, capacity building for, for building leadership in each and every member so everybody feels like they really are participating in that kind of thing. And then of course getting the, the capitalization right helps a lot. So not you know, having enough money to even pay people for the meetings and for the training, that kind of thing helps. Uh, I would, I guess those are sort of the major things. When you're transitioning, at least you know you have a viable business. Um, but that education piece, I think, turns out to be really essential. I, I think there was a question that I heard while I was just sitting back there also about um, you know, do people want to take on this risk? Is this something that everybody wants to do, become an, an owner? Um, and the additional meetings and the additional responsibility that comes with that. And I think um, we all want dignified work, right? I think um, there are ways that we can structure this. I mean, the answer is often no when you're transitioning right away, that some people opt out. You know, people say, no, I just want to be an employee, and some companies allow it. Um, some of the cooperatives don't. Um, so if you, some of them require you to be a member or leave. Some of them say you can stay on as an employee if it's your choice, but you, you know, you want to become a member. Um, but it's it's a it's something that is deeply rooted in our education. It's something that we need to make long term change around. Is the idea that we are um, owners and responsible for our communities, for our businesses, for everything that um, is around. Um, you know, that makes our economy tick. On the um, ownership, culture, and education side, our plan um, is to build ownership culture training that also um, has racial equity element that ensures that what we're creating as we transition businesses isn't the same um, racist and um, cultures that perpetuate stereotypes and perpetuate people um, being perceived as unequal in this society. So I think that that's um, what we're working on. So on land trust? <laughs> yeah, I'll just talk briefly about um, ag agricultural land, because um, we're my organization's actually working to help preserve agricultural land also, to preserve not just land as open space, but actually as working organic, sustainable farms that are affordable and accessible to the new generation of farmers. Because just like businesses are transitioning over being sold because of retirement, that's happening with farmland also. And a lot of it's getting um, consolidated by big, you know, corporate ag. But also, there's people who just want a second home with a lot of green space, you know. And so it's being, or it's being sold to development. And so the land value is being appraised at that development value, not at its ag value. So there's a bunch of different strategies, but one is um, land trusts actually purchasing or having land donated to, the, to them and then putting a perpetual easement on it so that it can only be used for agriculture. And then also having these long-term leases where they can put restrictions on what um, what kind of farming can be done and, that, and require that it be farmed, not just be 